Hello everybody, and welcome to the latest Worlds of ZZT livestream, now with Reduced Flicker. Uh, today we are going to be playing Civian, as we, after a, a month of Super ZZT games for October, we got to finally go back to our polls. And our winner was the, long awaited for me at least, ZZT games with Megazooks remakes. And for the longest time I have known that the First time that one wins a poll, I'm going to be playing Sivian, and I've been looking forward to this. Uh, from what I'm seeing in chat, a lot of people either haven't actually played this one or haven't finished it. And I can totally understand not having finished it. This is one I've been playing since I was a kid. It came out in 95, so before I was started ZZTing. And I never made much progress in it. I only sat down... Let's see, what's the date? In 2017, when I did a closer look on this game and finally played from start to finish and saw everything there was to see and finally know what this game's deal actually is. In short, it's a fantasy adventure game that's really ambitious, uh, really impressive for the time, and also really shows its age when you play it today. It's... I still love it. Like, I still think this is a very impressive and overall good game. It's just, it's got, it's got problems, man. And we're gonna see those problems. Uh, before we do start properly, I wanna first say, hey, for folks who are familiar with this game, keep this one spoiler free. This is a pretty lengthy game. I don't think we're going to finish this in one sitting. I'm, I've got a planned cutoff point. This is almost certainly a two-parter. Everybody say hi to Gate. Hello. That was him. All right, he's, he's nodding in approval. Yes, anyways, we're going to see these problems for sure with this game, but it's a great game nonetheless, despite these issues. It's a critical piece of ZZT, I would say. Uh, the thing I wanted to say was, for folks who are familiar with this game to some extent, at this point there are some ways in which even it has become a bit of a meme in the ZZT community. Please keep that all uh, under wraps. I would like this to be... Consider this spoiler free. Don't go don't go discussing anything. Especially about the Megazooks uh remake, as it were. We're gonna get to that eventually, but definitely not tonight, that's for sure. The only other thing to say is to comb through some of these notifications here. Thank you to the Green Herring for a four month subscription now. Good job. Saying hello, hello to you. And also for 100 bits. Nice job. Good work. And also, thank you for the follow, Agitated Cash. Alright, let's see what uh, Civian is all about. Let's see, let's let this title screen roll and I'll talk a little bit more because there's still some more background info on this game. It's got this great title screen, which is really just like a company logo. Magic here, that's supposed to be a stylized M. Also, yes, I did finally go back and fix the issue with the bits, like, freezing everything, so... Please give me all the bits. I will take them. All these, while these bullets play their beautiful music. Uh, this one has a, a fun text file, actually. A lot more fun than I was expecting. Worth actually reading from. Uh, this is version 2.0G. We don't have the original version, and this is a game which I would love to find the original version of. I'm extremely curious what that looks and sounds like. Well, let's see here. According to our text file, it finally happened. I said it wouldn't, and I did. This is it. Sivian 2.0G. You ask why? Well, myth had something to do with it. At least I think that's supposed to be myth. Well, here I am, and here it is. What's new, and what does the G stand for? Um, the G stands for Gamma version, 
which means this is a public release that hasn't been fully tested. That's going to actually be critical information, and not what you would expect. The difference between a beta version, the beta versions are not public releases, I think, question mark. Author of this game, Mothingo, seems a bit confused by this. Civian is freeware, but only partially public domain. You can rip my ideas as long as you give credit, but you can't look at the programming. Mwahahaha. There is a change list, which is pretty short. New music and sound effects, every board has been completely updated, five or six new boards, new puzzles, a deeper plot, new names for the new character, I'm sorry, new names for the main characters, also yes, partially public domain is great, new title screen and menu boards, a longer ending, and documentation. There's an about section that explains that the game originally started as a Q-Basic game called Subterranean that had a Hercules and VGA version. The Hercules one it apparently looked like ZZT, and when Mothingos found ZZT, he decided to just make it for that instead. And that became Sivian. But of course, and I quote, Recently, I've decided to expand Sivian to a three-part series on Megazooks. And of course, it will later become a novel when I decide to sit down and write it. As, as is the case with most novels. And again, quote, What I like most about Sivian? is that it is a, a... Sorry, I have to, like, rephrase this because of the typos. What I like most about Sivian is that it is original in the fantasy epic. No more standard genre of elves and dwarves. Sivian tries to include every mythological creature ever thought up, such as a basilisk or a chimera. I was also glad to include a totally believable magic system. Sivian is yet to evolve into a more complex system and story, so keep your eyes peeled. Now for a little on the game, Sivian is the story of a young man named Rook, whose fate has chosen him to be the bearer of light. The infinite struggles to balance the scales of good and evil comes to a climax as the true nature of Rook and his nemesis Aprithia is revealed. But you'll have to wait for the next three installments of the adventure just to see it. So enjoy the ZZT version, and get ready for the Megazooks version. Yeah, sorry, like I said, this is long. The only other thing I want to call out is there is an FAQ which has a few joke questions about Doom instead, including this game gives me motion sickness, any recommendations, and the answer just being don't play Doom. And that's about it. There's a fun little about me that gives us a little bit too much detail about where this guy grew up and lives and got a Nintendo. But it does end with with this. I now consider myself a tall computer nerd with no zits, no pocket protectors, no suspenders, and no girlfriend. Sigh. So that's what we're in for today. I hope you enjoyed that background. We'll, we'll move on from these bullets now. On to this void of black. This extremely mission ending, but not well, I guess not title screen, but uh, here we are. Yeah, okay, you're just admitting it. Thank you. I'm not even the player, I am the star of this game. Excuse me, Mothingos, but I'm the star. Okay, so we are just going to keep doing this parody. Okay, I forgot about this. Yes, let's start the title screen. We gotta get this going. Show us the real title screen. Title! The title spell. We've got a cool S. Still... Still going. Slow start. There we go. Sure looks pretty against a black background. We gonna get more flashy effects. Are we gonna do the beautiful music joke? Okay. I'll make a beat. Here it goes. Cool. 
cool beat. It's no Swan Lake. Please just let us play the game. This is not necessary. Every ZZT game wanted to do this for some reason. Well, y'all in on a little secret. It's tedious in Mission Enigma also. You just put up with it there because it was like the first time anybody did it. Is there going to be an Energizer bunny? There we go. That's something. That's also true. I think actually if I move, I'm pretty sure there's just an invisible passage and I can skip this. But oh man, if you can't. Oh no, please don't introduce the monsters. We don't... we can just... No, you don't have to. That's a lion. That's a tiger. That's a bear. Good job. You got one. And a head. The gang's all here. And our hero is allergic. Whoa! It looks like he killed Mothing Ghost there. Okay, there's our nice little disclaimer. No animals were harmed. I'm glad we have politically correct advisories! Stylized lettering. We've got everything here. And Barney! That was the worst... We've heard quite a few... Barney sounds. That, that was not good. That was crusty. Yes, let's leave. No, no. Go west, then down. Okay. So yeah, you can skip that, but you know, we've got to be complete here. Now we're at the main menu. Soon enough, we'll get to play. We've got a plug and a smiley face. Laugh! And a password. I do like this board. Uh, the G didn't seem to fire, which I guess is deliberate. Don't laugh. Everybody stop laughing. Are you going to give me some information on what this means? It's not funny. I was expecting like a text blurb of like, oh, this is a game I'm working on or something. There we go. This game won't come for a long time. Following the kind of space humor of Sierra's Space Quest series is about a man who has a poor job, gets fired, and saves the universe. It will be pretty funny, too. What you are witnessing is the actual title screen. Oh, well, it'll look way better in Megazooks. Isn't that just how it always goes? A lot of a uh, self is really talking himself down here. Mm-hmm, okay. We gotta get this show on the road here. Okay, but we can't actually play the game. We are locked out. We can only watch all these credits. We have to input the password. Uh, well, we're gonna see. Uh, the cool thing is, Snorb, is we've got the, the NL newsletter now, and there's like articles about how ZZT is dying because all the good ZZTers have moved on to Megazooks, and now the only people making ZZT games are like people who are bad at it. Password question. Who does the foam-like creature in Fred 2, the one that guards the bridge, look like? Press the letters to make your word. Another flashy board. This game is buck wild. We have to enter a password to be able to play the first game in the series by answering trivia about a different game by an entirely different author. Originally, I was going to put in something wrong just to see what happens, but no, we're just. We gotta get moving. It's Barney. It is absolutely Barney. There is at least one bit of this existing that makes some sense, and that we did eventually find there's a actually a joint 
filterware release that contains the Fred games and Civium. So if you get that, then you would have, you know, Fred 2. Well, let's try the right meter I love the little color banding. This game has nothing to do with the Fred series. We are 15 minutes into the recording. We've almost started. Correct password. No, still not. Sorry, we have to wait for this, I guess, to set a flag or something. Maybe? This not working. I'ma just get this started. Actually, let's just make sure, because there's some one extra flag for some reason. This is how most people play this game. Ah, oh, there's an invisible object here too. Okay. Welcome to Sivian. I promise you it's a cool game, actually. Rook sits up and stretches his sore limbs. Sleeping on the hard bed was not what he was accustomed to, but neither was being a farmer. Looking around the meager setting of his... I guess that's supposed to be abode. He pulls himself out of bed sleepily and prepares to face the day. Welcome to Sivian. In this adventure, you play the role, the role of the son of a local noble who died. Your name is Rook. Basically, Rook's mother tried to take over, but did not use money well because of her immense greed. In return, it left Rook poverty-stricken, and his mother stoned to death. Facing death, Rook flees his hometown of Gwyn, and soon settles in a small village known as Bespin, the Cloud City. There he meets Dulcis, another stranger who has found room and board. They soon become friends and roommates. The story picks up about now. Hmm. Obvious remake of Civian 2.0G. If you have the original version of Civian, chuck it. Hey, if you have the original version of Civian, please don't chuck it. Because it seems like everybody did. Anyways, now why don't you get Megazooks so you can later get Civian Megazooks? ZZT just isn't as fun to program in as Megazooks is. So I'm going to program all my following, in, all my following games in Megazooks. Now play, and when you get bored, go play Fred or Fred 2. Please don't chuck it, I beg you. All right, we've got a little inventory object here. This game does have some interesting ideas. We've got a bottle of oil that we keep on us at all times, apparently. This game leans in to its, its realism in strange ways. Got some fancy clothes. Got Dulcis's clothes. He dresses funny. Here we go. This is just iconic writing. Rook look if I can speak. Rook looks this outfit over, deciding he likes the gruffer look over his old cheap frills. Pulling the outfit off the rack, he dons a muddy brown pair of trousers, laces up a white billowy cotton shirt, puts on a leather tunic, and sets a little archer's cap on his head. Next he grabs a forest green cloak and throws it over his shoulders, following which he dons a pair of muddy boots. This maximum detail. Rook shakes his head as he looks at his bow, in which he had been searching for quite a while now. Can we not take it yet? I guess not. We've got this cool door. That's, this, this is how we make doors in Minecraft. Wow, you're up early. I take it you got the job at the museum. Right on that. Early morning hours they gave me. But I'm late because I couldn't wake you up. Why wake me up? What did you need? I need that bottle of oil. Let's see. You borrowed from me. What for? Why are you asking us? Yes, thank you. I don't have time to tell you now. Well, maybe later. No, go get it, please. I thought I had it. I guess I don't. The sleeping oil. The 
first step in the room and it is pitch black, but quickly Rook's eyes adjust as he sees the outline of his gear. The melodic squeak of a rusty gear sounds. Oh, we found a bowstring. Some ammo, some gems, and this is the door mechanism. See, this is how the door works. Now we understand this. They've got a, a basement with an elaborate series of gears to open the door. Here we go. Ever so carefully, Rook restrings the bow by stretching the string across the narrow notches at each end of the bow. After testing the bow out, he decides the string could need the string needs a bit more in the cohesiveness area. Rook searches the pockets of his trousers and retrieves a small bottle of oil. Dipping his fingers into the bottle, he runs his oil-covered fingers over the string of the bow, letting it sit for a minute after this. He checks the string again with satisfactory results. Then he straps the longbow on his back. Alright, we've made our string more cohesive. I can at least say that this excessive writing is not going to last, thankfully. But this is a slow-paced game. Okay, you've got your oil. Ciao. Our authentic passage sound. Here we are. Welcome to Bespin. It is not actually a cloud city. Before we talk to anybody, we have to let this conversation play out or else things will get very confusing if multiple conversations are happening at the same time. Ho de jam, says Sir Charles. What fine products do you bring to my estate? Only the finest in the country. Let's go talk at your place, eh? It's such a realistic setting. Okay, now we can talk to people. Like Jara. Hello, Jara. Could you do me a favor? Sure, what's the favor? Well, I need you to go into the Arkwood and get some wild strawberries. Jacob is having some very picky guests over who love strawberries. Unfortunately, the only patch is in a troll hideaway in the northern woods. Could you... Don't worry, the strawberries are as good as yours. Aw, oh, look at that. Actually, using, using an accented character in the text. This, 1995, good job. So here's the thing. It's probably going to take us an hour to get those strawberries. Like Shivka. No fishing, no swimming, no camping, no animals, no fires, no gems, no dirt, no fun. I've, I've played this game many a times as a child without getting those strawberries, believe me. Oh no, Marin lost her doll in the lake. Yes, it is also quite shark-infested. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Jakal got fired. Again. Always out of a job. That I guess that's it. <laughs> We're just gonna leave them be. Here's Jacob's shop. Swords, keys, bows, armor, torches, all the good stuff. Exactly, he just learned to code. Uh, there appears to be a dragon protecting some gems. Rook does not like crossbows. Does not want to buy chainmail. And does not know how to use a sword, so this shop is off to a great start. Uh, that was... yeah. Like that, I'm pretty sure. Alright, Sadie here. We've got four gems, torches, arrows, a jailer key, ropes and hooks, town gossip, or we can ask her on a date, why not? That seems healthy. She's into it, thankfully. How about the gossip? I shouldn't be gossiping. Did you know a whole bunch of guys in armor suits have been hanging around the forum? Alright, so what I do recall about this game specifically, I do have my little ancient closer look open, which is going to be my, my reference if I do get stuck. 
what we are going to need to do is get all seven key colors. One of which is the Jailer key here. So we do need Chen Gems for that. I have no idea what the ropes and hooks are for at this time. But we need money. I don't want to spend money on other things just yet. This is a game that's incredibly easy to softlock to the point where I'm not even going to try. Like, we're going to be cheating. We're going to be setting flags and things. We're going to save time. Ah, uh, yes. We've lent somebody some arrows. Jared here. Hands us our arrows back before doing inventory. Is this what Skyrim is like? The counters! I haven't cleaned them yet! It's so exciting. Quick, get the rag. Ding! Okay. Got a blacksmith here. Please don't look directly at the at the light. Don't thug Ruthord. What was that noise? Okay, I guess we're robbing the shop. These are not my arrows to take, but they are now. I mean, might as well go for broke. There we go. The gizmo thingamabob. Contraption says here, guarding some gems. Apparently it was poorly built. For the second Rook touches it, it falls apart. Oh, there we go. Solid oak counters. Quite clean. This is a very fancy store, actually. And we'll get our first key, which we don't know that we need yet, or why. Why would we need a key? You would assume that's for, like, a jail of sorts. I don't think it is. We got a few more places here. Head to the forums for a lively discussion. We got a hot tune playing. I do love the detail in this game, though. Like, that they actually have this waitress going around. Oh, the musician, obviously tired of playing, with no one appreciating his work, the musician packs up and leaves. Ain't that just the way. This game has a ton of charm for, like, a 95 game. Like, there's a lot to goof on. Oh, sorry, the Aprithians are attacking. But look at it, the waitress is still, like, just... Hmm. Counter is covered with beer stains, obviously, because this is a bar, Rook tells himself. Thank you, Rook. I probably don't want to oh God, shoot anybody on accident. Is everything alright? There's, like, assassins. Like, she's committed. There we go. Rook checks his bow for cracks, but looks up to see the entire forum silent and staring. Carefully, he lies and tells them that they are common brigands. The uneasiness remains, but the usual hub in the bar continues. My gosh. Okay. This woman is sitting alone, but she is ignoring us so she can listen to somebody else. Everybody's going to ignore us in this game. There's a drunk. Rook is not a great character. Which I guess is fitting for like a, a former noble who had to had to run off in order to not be stoned to death. All right, so no help here. Ah, uh, that seems to be consistent here. That's not the case everywhere else, though. But in this instance, yes, purple means girl. You can buy all sorts of stuff at the bar. Brandy with an E, mutton, wine, cheese, steak, and bread. Unfortunately, I spent all my money on a key. I believe this is, like, the only way to heal in this game. And I also believe this is a game where, like, money is very tight and there are more mandatory purchases to be made. What about you? Okay, we're not allowed to get to the beer barrels. Uh, we can check out this mysterious thing. 
I wonder if there's a secret passageway between the large flashing arrows on the wall. God, oh, somebody's getting the stake. Does this guy say anything different? Oh, uh oh. Okay, she was just getting more beer. No, he has nothing to say from the other side. But we can get behind the bar. Which also has nothing. What about the bartender? Thank you. That's that's all that was all about. Find the secret passageway. To get behind the bar and be told to download Megazooks. This game it does some heavy advertising. We've got Yield Prison. Okay, actually, maybe we will need our key. I'm Officer Cole. What do you want? Interrogate the prisoner, claim arrest, or a date. Why not? Let's go. Can we go two for two? No. Unfortunately. Oh, we also have this great setup here. Let's see if we'll do it again. But there's just a series of ricochets here. Yeah, this prisoner is just come up with a way to shoot this man endlessly. All right, maybe we can talk. Jorvan Finn escaped from jail, wanted for murder, robbery. Five eleven, brown eyes, black hair, blue robe. Contact the Paladish Guard. Careful, this individual is fully trained in magic and is dangerous. All right, can I? Can we learn anything from this prisoner? We have no reason to do any of this right now. The only thing we've been told to do, hang on, the, he's numb now, has been, hey, can we get some strawberries? Oh, I guess we're talking to a different prisoner. Get me out of here. Okay. <laughs> Oh, don't have cow, Mr. Officer. This is a problem here. Again, there's two conversations happening in this bottom text, and it's a nightmare to follow. Okay, the prisoner will tell us a secret. You're on death. Oh, don't see. Different thing. I'm looking. This is like, this is so difficult to follow. Did anybody get anything out of that? I don't know what information we got, or is he only going to tell us the information once we escape? Or not escape, break him out, let him escape. What about claim arrest? What do you want me to get? There hasn't even been a crime, has there? Alright, let's see. We've got... Well, one more labeled building. The Library of Bespin. There we go. That's a good good ZZT library. Nice use of line walls for books. Overdue finds. A tenth of a gem per day. I'm doing a very bad job talking to the librarian. Excuse me, miss. Shh. Okay. That's the joke. There's the price of a library card. I think there's one book here in this corner, probably. Book must have fell out of the shelf, or compulsively decides to read it. Creatures of lore. We've got demons, we've got jinn, we've got snake weapons, we've got goblins and trolls and ogres too. We've got, oh, we've got the descriptions here. Demons are mischievous creatures with a great deal of power, almost invincible, they all have a specific weakness, most of which are Extreme cold and heat. One needs to either observe behavioral patterns or chance an analysis spell. Jin were months masters of the Catalis magic system until they absorbed too much power and destroyed themselves or drove themselves mad. The ones that went mad were eventually all imprisoned in small inanimate containers such as bottles or oil lamps. Jin are now generally mischievous and can only exert their power in the form of three wishes 
Like demons, too much exposure out of a bottle can be a weakness. This can prove to be fatal for the Jin. Cool, cool snakes. They slither on the grounds. Okay, these are just ZZT centipedes getting, uh, getting really dressed up. Goblins. Goblins are stupid yet irritable beings who spend most of their time underground but occasionally come up to throw rocks at humans. Amen. Trolls. Trolls are stupid creatures who live in dense woods. Overexposure to light will kill them. So much. Ogres are tall creatures with a low IQ. Who wrote this? But are extremely strong and can crush a human skull with one squeeze of its hands. Tired of reading. Brooke places the book back on the shelf. Is that all? Okay. I... Yeah. Well, now we know. Everything is stupid. That's pretty much how it goes. We've got one unlabeled building. Ah, I see. It's Joan's Amazing Shop. This has some... Some serious... Um, how am I playing? Smiley Guy vibes, actually. Things like Flaky's Discount Bargains. Joan's Shop is pretty cool, though. More stuff for sale. Torches... Arrows, food. If we had 10 gems, we could buy a live dragon. Two gems for a ride. Four gems for the shooting range. And also a banner? You must love my fabulous banner on the north wall, but it's not for sale. Tragic. Okay, well, again, we're broke. But this is definitely the coolest place yet. Let's... Let's go west, only because I know that's uh, at least let's start our strawberry quest. Is gonna be a bit. Also, I love what this game does for shading. With this, I have no, I don't know how to describe it other than like maze shading. It's the these outlines like this. In this case, unfortunately, it is literal. It is either forest or wall, and so this is just a maze. But elsewhere, it's used as, like, a background thing, and it, it looks nice. I'm a fan. I'm a fan when it's shading. Me troll chief of Ugg tribe. Inside, me troll friends. You know welcome here. Me warn you, now you pay. Get them, boys. Beat them up. Come out of big trees. That one was smart. Also, it's like 50-50 if I softlock the game. I think there might be an alternate way to do this. Cool cave. Can't go in. I guess we... Defeated the troll army. He's got nothing to say about it. I guess this way looks faster. What about this? Oh, okay, yes. So this is a cave. We're already out of torches, by the way. This is one hell of a cave. I turned the lights on for a reason. First of all, there's a Quiblex, according to this scroll. Some sort of monster down there. I'm pretty sure that's just instant death. Maybe not instant, but instant enough. There is a way past. I don't know if we just... Yeah, okay. Whoa. So yeah, we have 97 ammo, and the room is filling up with slime, and we will not have enough ammo to shoot our way out, so don't do that either. This game will destroy you. Then there's this. These boulders here. You can see there's a red key over there, and like I said, we need to get all seven colors to make progress in this game. I have no idea how you're actually supposed to get past this. I th think that lever, like, clears... It has to clear the boulders. That's the only way you're going to be able to go up here. But I have no idea how you're supposed to actually get 
in here. There's like very little room to do anything. So I'm just gonna take it easy. I haven't solved this puzzle before. I'm not gonna solve it now. Yeah. And the thing is, you don't know that key's there if you don't cheat. And so if you go in here and mess with these boulders like whatsoever, you're soft locked. You can't do anything. And you don't know it. It's just extremely easy to just get stuck in this game, which is why I'm not gonna have it. Yeah, you can't see the switch either. You 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 get no information whatsoever. It's just a very ambitious game that Alright, calm down. That just it has a lot of questionable designs. Yeah, this one mm, Yeah, yeah, no, this one def definitely hates the player. Nice bears! Just give the key to Uncle Rook. Well, I already killed them. It is very player hostile, actually. I just, I just don't get the thing. Is like Dan Shoot Wrong seemed like it wanted to be, and I don't get that vibe from this. This wants to be a grand epic fantasy adventure, part one of like fifty. There's going to be more games. There's going to be a book. More Rook in the Rook book. But you're never gonna see this stuff. You you just gotta go for it. Hang on, what do we got here? More trolls. Just, just a ping pong path for the hell of it. Absolutely what we needed. Me troll chief, bam! Me tribe friendly. Ask for food or ask for gems. I guess food might be strawberries. Me have strawberries. Me give if you give poison needle. Need to use the uh other chieftain out of only way. Okay. No can has poison needle. Please get. Now I get to do this again. Lovely, wonderful. Well, okay. I killed all of his boys, but I didn't kill Ugh. Let's see, I think we can actually get the girl stall if we go around the lake. Yeah, so here's more of this. And this I had to look up, because I did remember this from the last time I played the game. There's, like, one torch there that's kind of just a tree, a dead tree. And there was no way to get past it. And same here. Rook examines the barrel. After close inspection, he comes to the conclusion that it is filled with rocks. And so I did look into this the other day, since I knew I was going to be streaming this. Apparently, if you have a certain flag set, the tree will go away, and you can get to, like, another room, which seems weird. But it looks like that flag is never actually set? We'll get to this later. But I don't think you actually can get to this legit. Uh, I have no torches. This is what this room looks like. That's a one-way exit, though, actually, so I guess we're okay. Can we go around? Nope. Oh, hello. Goodbye. Thanks for stopping by. Your message will be preserved in the VOD forever. Rook sees a small object on the lake shore. Well... This is not a helpful spot. Why did you add these boards? I mean, I get for that corner, but why did you let the player go here? So that was just a complete waste, actually. I shouldn't have gone south whatsoever. We can go east, at least. Ugh. Dang, rock won't move. This is impossible. Grown. Hello, young fellow. I'm trying to move these rocks out of the way. I can probably manage this one on my left, but I can't budge that one on the right. Could you help me? 
Boom. Effortless. Is that good? Look, I can even pull on it. Are you, you good, man? This rock? Rook examines the object closely to reveal a startling fact. It's a rock! And that's a rock fact! What do I do here? Do I push this all the way to the edge? There we go. If it's not on this board, it's not a problem. One last final shove and grunts. He pushed the boulder out of the way. Thank you for helping me. I'll give you a reward. You got it, pal. See, here I like the shading. Come into my house. You got it. Big purple house. Come, I'll give you that reward. Okay, okay, relax. Your reward is death! I am no mere farmer, but an Aprithian on guard. Flesh wound. Flesh wound. Ah, my wound is mortal. You may think you have beaten me, but you have, have to still deal with my henchmen. Twice. Hmm, Aprithians, yes. We're also getting kind of low on ammo. Do I even need to? These are just ruffians. They can just hang out there. So yeah, that, again, didn't matter, I don't think. Did it set a flag? Trial 1, Trial 2, KV, Troll. Maybe it did. It's just surprise assassins. Everybody wants to kill me. Ah, uh, aha. Stupid trolls. Take that, you stupid trolls. I think we found the author of that book. Bears? Well, let's go around. We can watch that play out from the safe side of things. Is this another sign for the lake? Nice fish all day swimming. Well, it's much more positive over here about the place. Also, in addition to me loving the, the maze shading, as I call it, I love the boulder-lined path. I think this game really does have a nice graphical style to it. Oh, go away, giant dragon centipede. No. No. Oh, thank goodness. On closer examination, Rook sees that the object is a doll. Contemplating his actions, Rook. Take it. Rook picks up the doll and hopes he can find the owner and return the doll. Oop. Well, there goes the head. I love the graveyard. Graveyard looks great. Bestwin Cemetery. Grave robbers beware. Let's get to that in a moment. I want to get around to where all those lines that turned into bears were. Same with this board. Another lovely board. Great art style. That's, that's the part of this game that holds up the best. Okay, the magician here. Wrong spell. All right, you mean old bears, become trees. Those are the ugliest trees I've ever seen, twisted and all. We have become tree. Rook studies the miner and then says, Tell me what you can about this mine. Tis a dragon dwells in them caves. We tried to mine, but he kept trying to eat us. Some of the miners say it may have had babies. We couldn't mine under these conditions. So I told the miners to go home until I thought of a solution to our dilemma. If you ask me, I believe that something strange is going on. Thank you, miner. I want to enter your mine. I tell you what, go find a better cave and I'll let you have this one, okay? Okay. I found a better mine. It used to have trolls in it. And it's to the west of town. We are to the east of town. So you're not going. Okay, you're going now. Well, that was at least well-coded, that part. Who are you? Just watching you. You're gonna do something amazing like uh, the magician back there? Great dialogue. 
Ha! That was a fine display of magic. Now that those stupid trolls are out of those way, I'd best be going. Oh, by the way, I have a little invention that maybe you'd like to look at. See if you can figure out where my place is. Alright, so we gotta find a magician who apparently vanished. Uh, we got bad luck with these enemies. If We could have pushed this boulder if there wasn't forest directly next to it and actually gotten a, a fast route back. But okay. This is probably just going to be a dark room. Yeah, I don't have torches, buddy. Well, here's the rest of this. If there's a lot of gold, that's something at least. Oh, actually, you know what? No. We're going to get some torches, I think. And money. We're going to start... We're going to do this. This is a pretty cool part, actually. I love this little gate. There. What? Why did you put an apostrophe in the middle of there? The T-H-E-R-E -E there. I see. <laughs> what? Okay. Hello. This is private property. You'll have to leave. Why? Because I said so. Won't the owner get mad? That you're on their property? I am the owner. I don't believe you. Let me see the title deed. What? Why should I show it to you? Because I asked for it. You can't see it. It's in my house. Okay, let's go get it. Why should I go get get my deed for a complete stranger? No, just go get it for me. But you're... Oh, never mind. I guess that proves it. You're a phony. I am not. You are too. And I am not. You are too. I'm not. You are. Okay, we get it. 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 Are you gonna dappy duck this at least? I guess Bugs Bunny. Still going. There we go. Look, I'm a phony and I just escaped from prison for murder and I was lying to you and that's that. What a great game. Oops. Uh-oh. Looks like I have to kill you now. Oh well. Like, he's really an unpopular guy, and for good reason. Oil. Oil? Uh -oh. I didn't think he'd be able to round the corner. There we go. Okay. It's having an effect now. I think. Yes, I'm dead. I only get a white key that's not a ZZT white key, so it's no progress there. Rook inserts the murderer, or key, in the keyhole. Excitedly, he turns the lock, but to his dismay, the gate stays locked. Frustrated, Rook walks away. Rook suddenly remembers the key in the keyhole. Keyhole? But to his surprise, the key dissolved in the lock. The liquid key runs up and down the bars, dissolving the fence. I don't know. This probably happens in, like, a King's Quest game. Now that I've seen, like the text file mentioning Space Quest. I'm like, no, actually, I can definitely see the Sierra influence here. Again, as much as there is to goof on this game, this game is great. I do love this. Rook steps into the shop and scowls in disgust at the ruin and disrepair. He notices a man on a stool sobbing. Somebody melted my gate. I'd cry too. 
<laughs> I got a laugh out of him. What's troubling you, sir? The man looks up startled. How did you get past the gate? It's kind of hard to explain. There isn't much of a gate now. Thank you, kind sir. My name is Hivalin Elwain. Hell yes, I am Rook Eldane. Now what's the matter? Let me relate the whole story to you. A while ago, I had this very shop up and running. It was doing rather well, other than the fact I was short on money, so not doing very well. I'll take a stretch right after this, this message. One day, while I was fishing, I found a small bottle. Uncorking the top, a wisp of black smoke poured out of the bottle. The smoke took an impish form, with two red eyes. It looked like an awful creature. It is still seen to be harmless, since it was made out of smoke. My first impulse was to throw it into the river. But the smoke spoke to me, saying it was Jin, that it could grant my wishes. I thought of the millions of possibilities involved in the wishes, so I took it home and showed it to my wife. Wonderful. She thought it was evil, and that I should throw it away. That was the first time I ever argued with my wife. Finally, my wife gave up, and we made up. My first wish, of course, was for money. The genie conjured up a huge pile of gems. I was overly excited, and my wife forgot all about her evil claims. We were about to go out and invest our money in a new store, when suddenly, an officer came to our door. He said that Jacob had caught us stealing the gems. I was outraged. In the end, though, my wife said to give the gems to Jacob and his family and forget the whole thing. I was in a dangerous mood. I needed money bad, and so I asked for it in a different way. I wished that I would have the most powerful business and bestman, and so the genie used his power, but instead he gave me the deed to Jacob's place. I freaked and ran over to Jacob's to give him the deed back. Strange enough, he didn't recognize me, and we were old friends. He thanked me for finding the lost deed. Then I went around town trying to get people to remember me. No matter where I went, nobody recognized me. I later found out what it meant when I got back home. To my amazement, my shop was in great disrepair and had a closed sign on it. Then I realized the Jin had to close our shop down to make Jacob's the most successful business. I ran inside, but a giant gate formed at the edge of my property, locking me in. I didn't understand why until I thought, if people can't get into my shop, then I can't open it up again. Unfortunately, I couldn't get out. I didn't blame the Jin for this, since I thought it was my own folly. When I went inside, I found out that my daughter had caught the plague. Wow. That sucks. That was when the plague was going around Vespin. Yeah. Everyone was catching the deadly disease. Yeah. I was frantic and went to the Jin to help my daughter. The smoke lifted her body, and for a second we couldn't see her. Then out of the cloud dropped the skeleton of my daughter. My wife screamed and I pulled out my crossbow and tried to kill the cloud, but it just laughed. I tried to destroy the bottle, but it wouldn't break. My poor daughter, River. My wife somehow figured her way through the, great, through the gate and said she would bury our daughter. I told her to never return to this place, since I couldn't get through the gate and couldn't get back in. She protested, but finally left. I hid the bottle in the back room, terrified of it. I just hated the evil cleverness of the Jin to find ways to twist my wishes so they hurt people. I've been trapped in here for years, never getting out, and strangely, I haven't eaten yet, but I haven't died. And that's my story. Alright. Thank you, Keegan. The gate is gone now. Thank you. Now I can go search out my wife and visit my daughter's grave. Take this shop. I have too many memories here. And destroy the Jin for our revenge. No one will approach this place unless you destroy the Jin. I must go now before I truly go insane. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. I'll avenge you. Okay, I'm going to take my stretch and also a water break, I think. So let me run a quick ad here. This seems like a good spot. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting adventures of Rook.
Well, shoot, I forgot the little ad break screen. Oh well, now I'll have to actually find this exact spot. Okay, I've had my water and I've had my little stretch. Let's fix this place up. Wilted and dead plants everywhere. Uh, door stuck. <laughs> Rook really has it out for this bed. It's sickening. I've never heard of furniture described that way. Okay, well. Here's the gym. Oof. Master. I have the power to grant you any three wishes you desire. Here's a chance to outsmart the Jin. Rook decides to phrase the Jin death wish this way. I wish you were dead. I wish you ceased to exist. I wish your bottle would disappear. I wish your bottle would blow up. I wish you would blow up. I wish you were nice. I wish you would disappear. I wish I had a lollipop. I wish you'd shut up. I wish you'd incinerate. I wish you were free. I wish you would leave me alone. Don't wish, wait. So we got our, our first puzzle. Let's free them. That sounds wise. Big mistake. The Jin gets out and eventually ends up destroying the world. All his limitation ties are broken. Game over. Yeah, let's see the lollipop for sure. Alright. I don't think they're all unique. No way, wuss. Okay. Um. And then it just stops. That's interesting, because that just puts the game in an unwinnable state. I wish you were nice. The Jin thinks he is nice in his own psychotic way. Nice try, though. Ah, uh, the Joker. Oh, hey, we actually get another chance with this one. Let's... Say, cease to exist. The Jin disappears. As some, as some great act of nature, the ceasing of the Jin rips a hole in the fabric of time and space. The whole universe falls into a cataclysm eventually and is destroyed. The whole thing happens in a matter of seconds, and Rook doesn't make it. Yeah, most people don't make it through the destruction of the universe. Yeah, I, I think we get the idea. Anything else of specific interest here? Let's just see if we get a fiery death with incinerate. That's oddly specific. Yeah, okay, that's... Whoa. Okay, it's flashy. Alright, we'll do blow up also. Uh, what was I learning? I wish, yeah, I wish you would blow up. Okay, a huge explosion levels most of Bespin. Unfortunately, Rook was in the middle of it. Uh, we're dying to a genie a lot. After arguing with a murderer that this was not his house. Alright, enough of that. Don't wish, wait. The Jin sits there as you wait, but soon begins to fade into nothingness. Rook pats himself on the back for a job well done. Suddenly, all the supplies reappear. Now we've got torches. We've got torches for days. What do you mean, what? That was explained. It was in the lore book in the library. It said if they were out of their bottle for too long, they would, like, perish. And so they did. It's 100%. It, the game completely explains it. one of the only things in the game that does get a good explanation. As if by some magical power, the shop automatically transforms into something cleaner. 
Oh, I mean, not that I'm going to stop you from watching the VOD, but, like, you can just pop this open to the file viewer. It is, uh, it is super locked, so it is very difficult to find specific boards. If that's a pain. Yeah, sorry. You're supposed to be reading this and paying attention. Alright, what are the beds like now? Potted plants. Is this a nice bed? Is it comfy? Yeah, it's comfy. It looks comfy. The rook isn't tired. So now we have our own house, which is cool. I guess, like, we can move out. We've got room for all our, all our cloaks and things. And we just got all of the store supplies for ourselves. Including energizers. Which don't matter. Because even if you run out the door with them here, it's gonna wear off before you can get anywhere. Yeah, remember? The, the Sivian book. The novel. So as a kid, I would do this, and I'd be like, okay, the reward for this is a whole bunch of torches, some ammo, you know, the works. Not quite. It's not just that. We now run a shop. I was walking through here when I saw the sign at the bridge saying, saying shop. I would like to purchase a torch. What are your rates? And now we get to play that Racketeer game from like a decade ago. It's probably been closer to like 15 now, actually. And now, speaking of the file viewer, actually, I'm going to look this stuff up because guess what? Some of these, if you don't pick the arbitrary correct answer, you softlock the game. I need to find this board amongst the, like, 50 identically named boards. That's another thing. This game is, like, 80 boards long. Oh, wait, no. No, no, no. Jail. Oh, my goodness. Where is it? Okay, I passed it out. Sure. Let me do it. Let me actually, like, navigate the world. This is why you can double click on passages in the file viewer. What is this? Customer. Okay. So, I have, of course, tabbed out here. Okay, one gem, three torches. Let's see. All right, so this one actually doesn't matter. I'll do one gem for three torches. Why not? I cannot accept that price. I feel like I'm cheating you. Wow. Oh, and so you just leave. Sure. I need 200 arrows for a campaign, sir. How much will I be charged? I'm getting some King's Quest 2 vibes now. All right, let me see this again. Yeah. So, if you pick anything here other than 50, he'll say it's too expensive and leave, which, sure, fine, fair. If we say 50 gems, that sounds great, but I'm a mite short. How about 30 gems and this key? And we need this key. Oh. Oh, I don't actually have enough ammo. It is taking from our supplies. So I actually need to have 200 ammo? Oh, this is going to be a very patient man then, huh? That's great. I didn't actually realize it did that. That's detail. Okay, so I guess we're going to see how fast I can type ammo a bunch. And Oh, that's right. I did at least up the ammo from cheats. Thank goodness. Okay. Are you still working, though? Oop, pardon. Sorry, don't mind me. I'm just flashing. I do. Hello? Hello? 
Oh, it's not gonna let me, is it? Okay. We're gonna find a lot of new ways to soft lock this game. Let's try this again. Service. Alright. How about one gem for one torch? That's that seems reasonable. It's a reasonable rate. I'll take two torches, alright. Business is booming. Fifty. Oh, I didn't cheat for my ammo again. Hang on. Will this? Oh, sorry. Nope. Actually, if you close out of the menu, it breaks. Oh, my, my headphone cable is all tangled up, so it's moving onto my desk. Okay. Now we have the two hundred arrows. 50 gems, please. 30 and a key. There's the arrows. Here's our key. After a few minutes of running the shop, Rook decides it is boring. He then decides to close the shop until he finds some hired help. Alright, so we've got three of our seven keys that we don't know that we need. We don't know why. Nothing in the game hints at, like, ah, yes. Arrows should be selling for 50. It's a mess. It's, it's very much a mess. There's a reason why I did not beat this game as a child, and I don't think anybody really did. I don't think this one has a walkthrough. Let me do a quick check on that. It's got a bunch of articles. Classic Game of the Month review. Closer look. A featured game, like Best of ZZT. ZZT House Hunting. Okay. So yeah, like... Only half of those are my doing. Oh, are you kidding me? I tried retweeting on my main account that I was streaming this, and it, the tweet didn't go through. Would you believe that? No. <sighs> All right. That's okay. We're, we're an hour in anyway. Okay, so that's three keys. Well... It's not so much that, it's more that people have definitely looked at this game in the editor and seen things. Okay, we have torches now. We can pretend our mind is dark. We have some ammo too. Alright, what's your deal? You're a corpse, okay. Oh, there's supplies, so I guess we could have got some more torches after all. Rook is surprised to see to the west the biggest gold deposit he had ever seen before. Lots of centipedes. Okay, sorry, I have to shoot them. Oh god, no, they're just gonna kill me. Okay, that didn't help. I can't. I don't have anything to get gold. Okay, that's a dead end. Um, this might be a fake wall. This looks like something a person could actually find. Yes, it is. And I'm being followed. I'm just gonna cheat for health because, as you can see, resources are, like, critical in this game. Apparently I need to have 200 ammo for that part. Maybe there's something that gives you a whole bunch of ammo somewhere? I don't remember. But it makes what seems like it's a very open-ended game a lot more linear. You can try a lot of stuff, but you can't, like, succeed at anything. What's the point of this? I don't understand this game. Great gold sound effects, though. Okay, there's some more here. Go south, and we can also go up here? Through here? Where are we?
Oh. Cool. I walked into a poisonous spider and died. The spider sinks his venomous fangs into your leg. Slowly the poison spreads. Death is inevitable. Every time. Alright, so do I shoot the spider from a distance? An excellent shot kills the spider. Are you kidding me? It's a dead spider. Um. Okay, that is a dead end. I have a feeling... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Obviously, the whole poison needle thing we need, that's how we're going to make our needle poison. So we're going to have to walk back into these mines later to find the dead spider that we shot with an arrow and rub its guts on a needle. Meanwhile, to the south, hey, we've made it to the prison. Rook examines the brick. Realizing it is loose, he pushes it out of the way. Watch out, don't shoot me. Wow, you came to rescue you, me. I tell you a something before I go. I stole one of the jailer's keys. It's outside of this cell. Thanks again. I wish he kept the Italian accent all the way through. I'm sorry, do I need a blue key to get a white key? I guess so. Well, I guess they said it was a jailer's key. Now we can do it. Oh, we can't. Darn. That might be the Aceland vendor. Uh, it also says there's a board to the left. Um, I can't move left or right here, so this is kind of it. Alright, I think that's it for the jail for now, then. We rescue. Ironically, we rescue the prisoner we didn't talk to about escaping. Let me just save time here. Okay, so I think we're done with this area. I think we're good on the east. Oh, we did skip the graveyard. Let's get to that. I don't want to miss out on the graveyard. Grave robbers beware. That was some nice music. But pushes open the gate. Mist bursts through the crack, flowing everywhere. Rook grabs a nearby shovel. Rook is ready to go. Looks at the grave, see an iron cross. Being ignorant on the subject of death, he never bothered to learn just what the cross was supposed to mean. It's these nobles, man. Mark Havlin. One more helping put him six feet under. Oh, do these all have unique descriptions? And we can dig up everybody's grave. This rules. Rook is incredible. Howie Porden. Never could tell where he came or went. John and D. Vibran. Rip. This one seems different. Grave to the nearly departed person. The grave hasn't been dug yet. Okay. Termoro. Great father. Covered in dirt and muck. Can't see the inscription. Sade lift. Outlived her children. Bummer. Corvalis Alexander Bornin died with his money in his hands. Unreadable. Givian von Sween killed the bear that killed him. Wait, what? I guess he got injured. River Elwain. She loved animals. So that's the... The daughter we heard about. See? There's lore. There's continuity. Let's dig that grave up. I genuinely don't know, remember, what what we are supposed to do here. So I guess this is a good a grave as any. Rook digs quickly in the soft dirt and soon uncovers a coffin. But as he opens the lid, a live bear jumps out after him. 
Probably should save, yes. There was a bear in that grave. Why was there a bear? This is the spot you reserved for the graveyard. All your tombstone says is Rook Eldane. I kind of want to, like, purposely die to bears in the graveyard, like, in this exact spot. Lime Ruxen, a hero to the ends. Unreadable. Warning, this fiend is trapped by dirt, not death. Oh, we gotta dig up that one. Digs for several hours and reaches a heavy oak coffin. But before he can open the lid, a zombie steps out and begins walking after him. So yeah. Oh, right. So this is an unkillable zombie, and I mean, obviously it's slow. And we could just run away, but... It does leave a trail of slime and water, so... That's bad. It's just instant death? No? Oh, it's actually not doing anything. There's... Well, where are you going? Okay, you're making sure to cut things off. Oh, there better be a solution in one of these graves. Okay. Dig for an hour. Discovers a skeleton holding a bag. Opening the bag, he finds some cooked chicken. Rook asks himself if he should eat it. I don't... I don't need to ask the chat. We know we gotta eat that graveyard chicken. Rook scarfs down the chicken, but suddenly feels a sharp pain in his side. Feeling the urge to vomit, Rook's vision suddenly becomes a blur of colors. He starts walking, but feels weak and faints. The poison travels to Rook's heart, where he enters a series of convulsive spasms, and finally lies still dead. Eat the flowers, eat the graveyard chicken. That's how it's gonna be. God rest your soul. There's... Surely there's something here. I'm just gonna speedrun these. Have to cade corpse, yeah, put it back. Oh, you were the zombie. Have to keep corpse. Okay, lots of half decayed corpses in this graveyard. Oh, sorry, already got to that one. Oh, hey, a skeleton with a quiver full of arrows. So there's something good. I'm just gonna zap through the slime. I'm not gonna reload for that. Ooh, gems! Another zombie. Okay, well who was this? Ah. Mm, another dead. So... I guess you can get gems and ammo? Did I do these ones? Okay. But surely it's not like the first grave if there's anything important here. No? Just weird. Yeah, two zombies, a bear, a cooked chicken. Alright, well, that's the graveyard. I hope you enjoyed. Boy, I was really hoping we'd get all seven keys in one go. Because the what you do after you get the seven keys is what I would describe as the halfway point. We have seen nothing of this game. Well, let's head north. Oh, actually, I think we can make progress on our strawberry quest. The trolls want a poison needle. I have a needle, but it's not poisoned. I'll take it, okay. This is a huge game, which is another reason why nobody has finished it. I'm just gonna... This is gonna be much faster than actually... I'm sure there isn't. Than actually wrapping all the way around the world again. I'll find that spider corpse. Poison that needle. Bring it to the trolls. 
And then I think we can at least finish the strawberry quest tonight. You insert your needle into the spider's abdomen. You now have a poison needle. Got that poison. What a game. Oh, we snow clipped here. Okay. We still haven't even gone north, which thankfully I don't think has much, at least for this early part of the game. All right, let's see here. Uh, you're the one we want to kill. You're the one we want to provide the poison needle. Needle, poison needle. Here are strawberries. Thank you. We've done it. We've gotten our strawberries. What's to the north? Lord Charles Graham's Boren's estate. Okay, that sounds boring for now. I think this might be a good place to call it for tonight. Oh, thank you for the strawberries. My pleasure to get them for you. It was quite the trip. And we get a key. Okay, so we got four keys. I think we can just buy another jailer key. If I can do that, I will, because I'm going to forget otherwise. Where's she going? Where are you going? What? I thought you had to, like, cook dinner for some people. Did we go in this one? I don't think we did. We completely missed another room. It's Jacob. Oh, Rook. What concern brings you into my office? Cool oak desk. Everybody's got really nice furniture. Ah, okay. We, we could have got some more info here. There we go. We carry jailer keys here, although I heard of someone seeing a key just west of Vespin. Okay, so there is at least a hint for the red key, I guess, in that awful boulder puzzle room. The Prithians, they're swarming our towns. In case you didn't know, the Prithians are hired assassins. Someone here certainly wants someone else dead. Caves, tell me about caves. Sorry, I don't know much about the caves. Okay, so we didn't really miss anything important. Let me buy one last jailer key. And we'll buy the ropes and hooks too, before I forget that. I don't know what they're for. I'm sure we're going to need them. And I think that will conclude our little tour of Bespin for tonight. What a game. I think it's fantastic. Oh, remind me also, we never actually gave that little girl her doll back. I meant to do that when we returned to town, and we never did. All right, all right. We have survived a good amount of Bespin, actually. We got five of the seven keys. We're 34% done with all these boards. That's something. Like I said, this is definitely a long one. But I think there's enough to it that it's a lot of fun. It's, it's very silly when it doesn't want to be. But this is absolutely the kind of game you'd play as a kid and just get lost in for hours, both in the literal sense as well as just being, like, enamored at this town that's created. This is so much more detailed than most ZZT towns of this era. Just the idea of having people just on the streets having conversations or the little NPC waitress in the bar that's just going around even during an assassin attack, I guess. Plus, Rook is a buckwild character who just dug up like 20 graves, managed to get a man to confess to being a murderer, and there's all sorts of fun stuff. Just killed like an entire tribe of trolls. 
and then delivered a poison needle so they that the other trolls could kill the last of them. It's it's a lot. It's a fun game, and you know this game was very much hyped and very well received. It's it's huge. It's massive. It's ambitious. It's got so much going on. But it also makes like no goddamn sense. Which actually makes it great to play through for a crowd. So that's something. Alright, that is going to do it for tonight. Uh, we will be back again on Sunday afternoon, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. Lord knows what, UTC, I forget. Sivianary. It's... Is Sivian supposed to be an anagram of vision? Is this supposed to be a visionary game? I think this game did have an influence on people, though. Probably more on the Megazook side, which is why, you know, when the time comes, we gotta see the Megazooks version. We gotta see where this went. You can probably guess that no, it does not have another three parts coming up after this, plus a, a dedicated novel. Oh, well, there we go. Thank you for the gift sub there. There's a lot. But alright. That's gonna do it for now. We will actually not get back to this next Friday. I'm gonna be busy then with the Thanksgiving weekend, as it were. And thank you for the 100 bits, TGH. We will return to Sivian in two weeks, which will give you all plenty of time to contemplate what we've seen here today. But again, Sunday, more wild card stream of Lord knows what, and then two weeks from now on a Friday. We will continue our journey through Sivian. So, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Later. Also, while I'm here, because I keep forgetting, I would like to send us off on a raid see what we got. Okay, actually, this will be a, a fitting move. Mr. Shasta has been playing uh, literally every DS game, apparently, and is currently on a strange sort of fantasy-ish RPG called Deep Labyrinth, which I was watching a little bit of last night. It seemed weird, so let's check that out for anybody who still has it in them for more. Alright. Now I will head out. See ya.